The experiment is a research method in which the investigator manipulates a variable under carefully controlled conditions and observes whether any changes occur in a second variable as a result. Thus, the purpose of an experiment is to find out how one variable, let's call it x, affects another variable, which we'll call y. In this formulation, we refer to x as the independent variable and to y as the dependent variable. An independent variable is a condition or event that an experimenter varies in order to see its impact on another variable. The dependent variable is the variable thought to be affected by manipulation of the independent variable. A good shortcut for sorting out the independent and dependent variables in experiments is to fit the variables into the equation how x affects y. Suppose, for example, that you encounter an investigation of the impact of group size on conformity to group pressure. You might think they're trying to figure out how group size affects conformity to group pressure. It would then be apparent that group size is the independent variable and conformity to group pressure is the dependent variable. Let's check your understanding of the concepts just discussed. This diagram maps out how an experiment typically unfolds. The investigator formulates a hypothesis and selects subjects to participate in the study. These subjects are randomly assigned to one of two groups that will be treated differently with regard to the independent variable. These two groups are referred to as the experimental group and the control group. The experimental group consists of the subjects who receive some special treatment in regard to the independent variable. The control group consists of similar subjects who do not receive this special treatment. After the independent variable has been manipulated, the investigator measures the subjects on the dependent variable and compares the two groups. Based on these results, the investigator draws a conclusion about the hypothesis under study. Let's check your understanding of the concepts just discussed. Let's take a more detailed look at the experimental method using a classic 1959 study by Stanley Schachter as an example. Schachter set out to test the hypothesis that anxiety increases a person's desire 
to be around other people. Schachter's subjects were college students who were randomly assigned to the experimental group or the control group. The independent variable in Schachter's study was the subject's anxiety level. He manipulated anxiety by telling subjects that they would be participating in a study on the physiological effects of electric shocks and that they would receive a series of shocks while their pulse and blood pressure were being monitored. To create a high level of anxiety, Schachter warned the subjects in the experimental group that the shocks would be very painful. To create a low level of anxiety, Schachter told subjects in the control group that the shocks would be mild and painless. In reality, there were no plans to shock anyone. These orientation procedures were simply intended to evoke different levels of anxiety. After the orientation, the experimenter indicated that there would be a delay while he prepared the shock apparatus. The subjects were asked whether they would prefer to wait alone or in the company of others. The dependent variable in the study was the percentage of subjects in each group who preferred to wait with others. What did Schachter find? Click on each group to see. As this graph shows, the percentage of subjects in the high anxiety group who wanted to wait with others was nearly twice that of the low anxiety group. Based on these results, Schachter concluded that anxiety does increase the desire to be with others. Let's walk through another classic study. Harold Kelly wanted to see how a subject's perception of someone is influenced by that person's reputation. Click each aspect of experimental design to learn how Kelly approached this question. Subjects in the experimental group were told to expect a warm person, whereas the control group subjects were led to expect a cold one. Both groups of subjects were exposed to the same 20 minutes of lecture. Then, the subjects were asked to rate their impressions of their new instructor. Subjects who had expected a warm person rated the instructor as more considerate, sociable, humorous, good-natured, informal, and humane than the subjects who had expected a cold person. Based on his results, Kelly concluded that expectations do influence the process of impression formation. In any experiment, it's crucial that the experimental and control groups be very similar. The only difference between the groups should be the treatment that they receive in regard to the independent variable. If this is the case, then any differences between the groups on the dependent variable must be caused by the manipulation of the independent variable.